In this video I am using Adobe Photoshop Express, a free app available on Android and iOS. I'm going to take you through my editing process for a couple of images. Um, one will be an interior um, environmental portrait and one will be an exterior environmental portrait. So to start off with, look at the interior. Um, this is a shot um, of my son Finn. Um, still in his cot um, in his environment where he's he's quite often happy especially when he wakes up and he's he's, he's being taken out of his cot so um, this is a simple setup where it's a subject with um, center of the frame with a light source off to one side given a slightly moodier look um, I want to show you the difference between the camera's automatic settings and one where you effectively tell the camera what you want your exposure to be where you adjust the brightness of the image so here's the image here's an image where the camera is effectively taking control and I've allowed it to set what the focus is and set what the um, exposure settings are automatically and as a result you can see the image is very bright so the cameras decided to compensate for the shadow areas by overexposing the image As a result, what you're left with is um, what we'd refer to as colour fringing or um, colour artefacts. So where the colours aren't quite around the image because it's so bright, it's lost that detail. So you can see here you've got some odd textures in the skin. And these are textures that we won't ever really be able to get back because it's so bright. And that's due to the limit, limited dynamic range um, of a smartphone. So if I try to change the exposure on this very quickly, You'll see that I never really get the true colors anymore. Um, I get very exaggerated colors and also I get funny textures um, where there's not enough detail to tell the difference between two light areas. So this doesn't really work for us um, in terms of an edit. It's far easier to recover shadow details than it is to recover brighter areas of the image. So I'm going to ignore this one and I'm going to go with an image where I did tell it what the exposure should be. So in this image this is um, where I've told the camera where to focus and I've changed the brightness of the image to say what I wanted. Um, you'll sometimes hear a phrase um, that refers to exposing for the highlights and that is exposing for the brighter areas of your image and allowing the darker ones to fall off into shadow. This is a standard approach for portrait photography but also for landscape photography, you'll hear it be mentioned there as well. Um, it's a kind of a rule that I tend to follow because of that issue in skin tones because you don't want to lose a detail in the brighter parts of the image. So the brighter part of the image should always have some detail in it so it's never too bright. And that's what we've done here. Now, generally by default, when you first download um, uh, Adobe Photoshop Express, when you select an image that you want to edit, it will do an auto enhancement, and that is, it will automatically turn that wand at the top of the screen on, and your image will change to what the camera, what the program feels is the appropriate settings. I generally tend to find this makes the image sometimes a little bit too bright, but also very blue it tends to go towards the cooler um, um, side of an image uh, compensating generally for the the color of the sun so actually it might be in some instances more accurate but it's certainly not as pleasing so i tend to ignore the auto enhancement but it's not a bad place to start sometimes it's worth clicking on that to see what effects it has and then tweaking those effects afterwards um, i'm going to remove it for this demonstration so i'm going to go back to the original image now by default when you um, start off editing an image um, you're effectively in a, a color category um, so that is the first option the first menu setting at the bottom left of the screen so within this these are effectively filters filters that you can apply to the image my looks are custom filters that will be enhancements that you've made and you've decided to save for yourself so we'll look at that a little bit later basic offers you your kind of standard instagram type filters so if I click on Vibrant there, you'll see it really boosts the colors in it, but it increases the contrast a little bit too much, certainly for this image. Sometimes it's worth enhancing your image and then applying a filter afterwards. Generally, I would tend to avoid all of these filters because they're very, very dated and the um, effects that they have on the image can be very exaggerated. Now, you can change the intensity of these settings, but even then, I tend to find they're the kind of thing that I would add a little bit afterwards, if at all. By clicking on the crop option there, we can change the size of the image or we can crop some of the image out. 
Now in this um, image I've decided to have um, Finn center of um, the uh, frame um, because there's not an awful lot of detail in the background. So I've, I've got a couple of problems with this image. He's not exactly dead center, I mean his head is, um, but his body isn't quite center to the image. And also I'm kind of thinking now after looking at the image, do I want all of that empty space to the left and to the right? So I'm, I'm likely going to change the size of this image. Um, but let's look at how this changing and um, cropping works. To start off with, you're, left, you're given a, an unconstrained option. Um, so here I can change the size of the image in any dimension in which I want. You can see there that I can pinch and zoom. So I can reframe that in whatever way I want. So unconstrained, unconstrained basically means that you are not limited um, to the original parameters. So normally uh, a photograph will be six by four on digital cameras. Um, with unconstrained, it can be whatever you want. If I select original, that will keep the constraints to six by four. So it'll only let me change the size of it with the original constraints. Moving along, you've got loads of different options. Uh, for different sizes of, Im of images. So um, quite good in terms of the naming there. You can see th the size that you require for a Facebook profile cover or your page cover um, for adverts, Instagram posts, Twitter posts. Um, for this, I'm gonna go to square format um, because I think that will allow me to show fin and also get rid of the empty space that I don't require. So for this, I'm just going to get him as center as I as I can. Um, but as I mentioned, he, it, it's slightly off in that his head would be center, but his body isn't. We can also see that, just looking at the wood at the bottom of the frame, it's at a slight angle. Um, so when I took the photograph, I wasn't perfectly level. A way to remedy that is to click on the rotate button, and that allows you to change the rotation of the image. So here, the grid becomes um, more detailed, so I can line it up a little bit better. I think that looks fine. Don't want to lose the hand there, so he is going to be slightly off there. Okay, if I do make any mistakes here, so I zo zoomed in, cropped in when I didn't want to, I can click the undo button. Right, so that's how I want the crop to be. So the next thing is to go into the individual adjustments. So to start with, I'm gonna ignore this mask option. This might not be available in all of the uh, different versions. Uh, so the one you're using may not include that. Uh, I'm gonna start off with light, which is the kind of old default. So within light, the first option I have is to adjust the exposure. So I click on the exposure and I can make the image brighter or darker. Again, if I make the image too bright, I will blow out some of those highlight areas. So I will try to avoid that. So I would tend to make modest adjustments here because you can always go back and change things as you go along. So a very small increase to the exposure. The next option is contrast. Now, most digital images can be improved by adjusting the contrast, and that effectively makes the bright areas brighter and the dark areas darker, so making a, a more distinct difference between the two. If I increase this ever so slightly, you can actually, I'll, I'll increase it to the maximum so you can see the impact of it. It becomes too much, too bright and too dark simultaneously. So very small contrast adjustments. Generally speaking, contrast is something I'd go back to at the end. It's always something I kind of want to apply last, um, depending upon how much enhancement I've had to make an, of an image. This is a good example of that because I'm going to be bringing it up the shadows so much uh, to compensate for how dark it was that I may need to add more contrast later on if it looks too washed out. Highlights is the next option. Highlights allows you to specifically target the brighter areas of the image to either make them brighter or make them darker. Generally speaking, when I'm using the highlights, I'm reducing them because I'm reducing that burnt out areas of the image. So with this um, particular image, I'm gonna use highlights in conjunction with exposure to reduce the brighter areas 
and also increase the overall exposure at the same time. So if I bring down the highlights a lot, go back to exposure and I can increase exposure now and it's not burning out as much in the highlights. So moving along to shadows and here's where I'm looking to boost the shadows. Now if you found your image was very, very flat, you could increase the shadows by dropping it down, making it darker. Good for contrast again, good for moodier images. But for this, I want it to be a little brighter. I want some of those details back. Not just because I want the shadow areas to be a little bit brighter, but also um, for things like the eyes, catchment of the eyes. Around its default, the eyes are very dark, but when you increase the shadows, the eyes will brighten up. This is also true for um, uh, darker skin tones. So if you have an image where you've got um, white people and black people or Asian people in there, you'll find that the image may expose better for some of the people in there. Um, so for darker skin tones, again, you might have to increase the shadows in order for them to be um, exposed correctly. So here's the shadows boost. The problem in increasing the shadows is always going to be that the image tends to look a little bit flatter. So even though we've got a single light source and we should have some shadows here, by increasing it a whole lot, it can look very flat, very, you know, um, a lot more uninteresting really. So to combat that, that's why I go back to um, the contrast. So I'd increase the shadows to get the amount of detail that I want. Then I go back to contrast and I boost that a little bit. It's just looking good. With whites, it's very much like highlights. This is allowing you to change the brighter parts of the image. So if I show you that, if I increase them, decrease, get a more naturalistic look. Um, this really adds the contrast. Sometimes um, I think with an image, it's good to have brighter areas and darker areas um, to contrast off one another. So um, for this, I'm gonna make a, a slight boost to it. For blacks, because I've already increased the shadows so much, I'm, I'm less inclined um, to make any part of it darker. Um, and also bringing it up too bright washes the image out again, makes it look very uninteresting. So I'm gonna keep that back around to its default setting. So that's our light options done. Moving on to our color options. This is allowing us um, to change the overall color temperature. Now this is probably where the camera's done um, the best job in terms of its uh, automatic settings. I think the color is actually quite good. Uh, if I move this lighter to the right, I'd be introducing warmer tones. So I was going for a very summery look. Um, I can move it over to the right. I think that makes it too warm. Um, and likewise, if you move it to the left to cool it down, then you end up with um, a very blue, sickly looking image. So I'm quite happy for this to be where it was. For that reason, I'm going to bypass tint as well because I don't think it would add much to it, um, making it more to the purple side or making it more to the green side. Actually looking at it, slightly more purple make, makes for a more natural looking white in the background. Vibrance is the ability to increase the colors, same as saturation, but vibrance is focusing on darker elements of it. So if I increase the vibrance there, you can see it's very subtle to begin with until it gets too much. Um, so a small increase in vibrance I think would be good, bring us some colors. Same with saturation, but I'd be a little bit lighter handed with saturation because saturation can go, as you can see there, it can go too much. Likewise, desaturation will reduce colors of the image to the point where um, it can look very sickly um, in a portrait. So for this, a very, very small increase maybe, um, without bringing up too much reds. This is where you're going to notice a lot of um, imperfections in the skin. Um, if, if someone has kind of a very red nose or very red cheeks, um, you may actually find yourself desaturating images slightly in order to um, deal with that. So that's our color done. Next option then is our effects. So within the effects, we'll start off with clarity. Clarity is an interesting option. Um, clarity is very much like a contrast enhancement, um, but it also sharpens at the same time. So this is where you can bring in a lot of structural detail. In fact, it, clarity is referred to as structure in a lot of other editing apps. So if I increase this to the maximum, you can see what's going on there. You get a very, very high contrast, overly sharpened image. It's a little bit too much, I would say. Um, 
I tend to bring clarity into images um, where I want to see contrast. So anything that would be kind of, you know, traditionally referred to as a, as a beauty image, you would probably not use clarity because you would be enhancing any of the flaws in, in the image. Um, so you'd be a little bit more light-handed or maybe avoid it altogether. For this, I'd bring in a little bit because I want that kind of uh, uh, contrast within the image. I've intentionally shot it to have some shadow. Um, so I, I, I want to see that in there. Dehaze is specifically for um, situations where um, you've got moisture in the air, um, generally for landscapes you'd see it a lot, where the image is a little bit washed out because um, of, of a kind of haze or a fog or a mist in the image. It's not going to do much for us here, it's, it's a, it's, again it's like an extreme adjustment um, that you'll see in an image and it, while it works um, for landscapes, unless the person's face is being washed out um, by the reflections of the sun or again by some moisture, um, you wouldn't really use it, maybe more for outdoors. So fade option. Fade is going to make it look like an old um, Polaroid or um, an old film um, shot. So again, I would avoid that. It's a bit gimmicky. Um, same with grain. Adding grain is an interesting one because now that people are using digital cameras, they've generally moved away from grain in images. Um, so this is, again, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a filter or a gimmick. It's only worth doing if you're looking for a very specific look in an image to make it look dated. So I'd leave that as it is. Vignetting. Vignetting is similar to, to that in terms of dating. Um, if I was to slide it to the right, you'll start to get that 70s wedding album vibe um, of kind of bright corners. If I move it to the left though, the vignetting darkens the edge of the frame. So you can see there, it brings us into the image. Now sometimes with a darker vignette, that actually works in terms of drawing you in towards the subject of the photograph and making you ignore the kind of um, corners, the peripheral of the image. So it's it's a matter of taste really. I would never go too far on it um, because it again does look like that kind of old wedding album look. Um, a very subtle vignette in there is sometimes nice. Sharpening, most images can do it with um, a form of sharpening in there. Really depends on the type of camera that you're using as to how far you'd go. Um, with some of the kind of mobile phone images, they can vary so much in terms of the light quality that's being used. So going too far with your sharpening um, can be problematic. Um, and really what, what you want to look for there is textures. Like here, here in the hair, um, it's over texturized. It. I want it to look a little bit softer than that. So I think that looks fine for this. Luminance, uh, reduced luminance or reduced color noise is looking at noise in the image. I tend to avoid using um, noise reduction um, purely because it, it it's like the opposite of sharpening. It reduces detail. Now it gets rid of um, potentially some uh, artifacts, certainly in the in the color areas. You could see skin tones being smoothed out. It's actually not making much of a difference here. Um, and perhaps all the more reason to ignore it. <laughs> um, but certainly I, I would avoid kind of noise reduction um, fe uh, features, functionality, on the basis of, of how much it can, it can make an image look overly smooth um, and look almost cartoony. So um, as I said, I would generally always go back to my contrast to see um, if I'm happy with what I've done because it's an, I, th I think it's an adjustment that really should come towards the end um, after you've decided how much shadow detail you want to bring back after you've decided how much of the clar clarity or the structure that you want back in your image. So let's have a look at that contrast. I don't think it's too bad actually, I think it was fine as it was. And there you go. So this I would be happy with personal preference of course comes into it um, I think for the for who the subject is because it's a, a younger child generally you'd be looking at brighter um, higher key was what they refer to it as where more of the image is bright than it is in shadow um, typically we bring shadows in um, for uh, generally for male subjects or for older subjects to, to, to show the age and experience in their face but I think sometimes having shadow in anyone's face um, provides the interest and certainly makes the image look more three-dimensional 
Um, and that's the benefit of having the light over to one side is creating that shadow. Um, one of the things with this image is I, I think it, because it has that contrast, because it has that shadow, this image would definitely work well in black and white. Um, and that's another um, edit that I'd like to show you. Um, so what I would do in terms of making it black and white is I would go back to um, the color options at the start, um, bottom left hand side. And within here, I go to the basic option. And within basic, I would scroll along till I got to black and white. Now, usually each of these thumbnails would have a preview of what the effect looked like. So black and white would be black and white. But for some reason, the app is running a bit slow. Black and white images are a little bit more forgiving in terms of uh, over and under exposure. Um, the, the, the shadow elements um, um, work particularly well. Um, so you can find that the edit that you've done on a color photo won't necessarily be what you want in the black and white. Um, so a couple of the areas that I would change, I would generally be inclined to boost those whites now, make the brighter areas of the image bright, brighter. I would also look at the clarity and clarity, I generally tend to find um, for black and white images between 20 and 30 really brings out that contrast. Okay. Um, and the last thing for the black and white is, again, I think the vignette can be exaggerated a little bit more to bring focus into the center. One final adjustment that I look at here is the healing option. This allows you to remove some blemishes. And I've noticed there, especially with the contrast adjusted, that there's just a bit of skin above um, Finn's lip there that could do clearing up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom into the area. I'm gonna change the size of the brush to suit and roughly how much I'm adjusting. And I'm gonna tap on the area that's affected. You might have to tap a few times in order to get the coverage that you want and the, the uh, effect that you want. But you can see there, it's almost seamless now. Um, you wouldn't really notice that there ever was anything there before. Once I'm happy with my image, um, I'm gonna export it and I'm gonna effectively gonna save a copy of it uh, onto my phone. Before I do that, let's have a look at the difference between before and after. So just next to the export option is the button to toggle between before and after. And if I'm happy then, I'm gonna click on the box with the arrow pointing up. And this allows me to save my image. I can dictate the size of the image by adjusting the pixels there. And I can also decide the JPEG quality. So how large I want the image or how much quality I want in that image. So I have it set to maximum. And then I've got the option to save it there to my camera roll, or I can save it on anything that I'm, I'm connected to at my device. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all available there. So now we'll look at an exterior environmental portrait. And this is with my elder son, uh, Cullen. Um, so this is a, a different setting in that not only um, are we outdoors, but also Cullen is backlit in this image, um, so the, the sun is behind him. Now, if I click on the Auto Enhance button, it's going to show me there that it feels as though the image should be cooler again, um, and it's brightening up, brightening up a lot of the shadow areas. That's not too bad, actually, in terms of the brightening aspect of it, but the colors of it um, are something that I would want to change. So I'm going to ignore, again, that automatic um, Auto Enhancement, and I'm going to go um, straight into our adjustments. So for this image, increasing the exposure runs the risk of blowing out the background there too much. So just like before, I would gently increase our exposure, but I would also look to reduce the highlights in order to combat that. Now this is one of those images where the extent of the dynamic range of the camera uh, impacts on the quality to the point where I can't recover uh, some of the highlight areas. They're simply too blown out. And you can see that here on Colin's hand. So there's some kind of banding there in the colors. That's something I can never really um, do much with. Um, if I try to reduce the highlights too much, I end up with 
kind of wrong colors and correct colors. So for this, I have to accept that some of the areas within the image are going to be bright, and that's perfectly fine. It's just how much of it um, you really want to allow for. Um, the, the only alternative there would be to put them into a darker area of the image where the, the, the sun isn't effectively catching them from behind. But actually that edge light I think works. Um, so I'm fine with it being a little bit overexposed in, in small proportion. Um, so another thing to mention while we're looking at the image actually is um, this is where we need to be a little bit careful with our, with our portraiture um, with a wide angle lens in that anything that's close to the image is going to look larger. So Cullen's left foot there. Um, looks particularly big in comparison to his right foot because of how close it is to the camera. The tends to be a lot more exaggerated with a smartphone because of how wide the angle of view is. Um, so it, it, I don't think it, it's a problem with this image. I would be very careful about getting too close to a single part of the body, like an, an arm or a leg, um, or with the facial features, um, being worried about how close I get to the nose, for example. Okay, so going back to the adjustments of the image, this is one where... Um, I definitely will be in, in, increasing the contrast, but I'm going to do, do so towards the end. Um, shadows, there's actually quite a lot within this image there. So maybe a moderate increase, a modest increase there in the shadow areas. For the whites, I ha again have to be careful about how much brightness I'm introducing back into the image. Um, or how much I'm reducing a body would flatten the image a lot more. So let's have a small amount of white increase. Try not to lose too much detail in the background. And similarly for the blacks, I probably again wouldn't go too far either way on those um, because I don't want to darken his face too much and also I don't want to flatten the image too much. So I'm going to put that back towards the center. Okay, for temperature, this is one that I probably would change because we're in a situation where he's not being lit directly by the sun. Um, he's in shadow, so the colors are not going to be um, accurate to um, the conditions at the time. Um, it was quite bright and sunny actually on that day, so the, the temperature should be warmer than it currently is. Now, in this example though, when I in increase the warmth, what we'll find is there's quite a lot of green in Cullen's face and that's down to the fact that the light has been reflected off the leaves and back towards him. So his environment, and you can see that very clearly actually on the, and towards his neck, there's a lot of green in, in the tint. So this is one where I would change the tint of the image and I would move it away from green and towards purple. Not too much, not to, to kind of stop it from being a warm um, summer image. Um, and we definitely want to keep the greens, um, but we need, just need to be careful about how it's affecting his skin tone as well. Moving on to vibrance, this is back to our color settings. So increase the vibrance a little bit. And this is where we'll start to bring back those greens. We'll start to get back the color of the leaves. Okay, just look at his face, it is not too much. It's not, not too green. The image is still very bright. Um, I'd be inclined to hope to recover some of the background actually by reducing the contrast rather than increasing it. Um, and that's recovered that background quite nicely. It does mean that I'm gonna have to increase the shadows. So that Cullen's face is clear. Great. So we did our vibrance, we did our saturation. Now we're gonna change the clarity. Again, putting the clarity up to the top can show just how overly detailed this can get. But moving it down to a more modest setting. I think that works. More contrast, more sharpness really with it. Um, Dehazing, I'm not sure if there was a lot of moisture there at the time. could bring back some of the details um, in the browner areas. I'm not seeing much change in it though. Ignoring the more gimmicky effects that we have there and moving on to sharpen. And again, we just sharpen to, to not get to the point where everything looks like it's been drawn 
with an outline. Um, we just bring it down to maybe something on the 20 mark. And I'm finally going to go back and have a look at the contrast of the image. And there we have uh, an exterior environment, environmental portrait. Um, looking at the composition, um, if I go and have a look here um, in the crop option, I can see that Cullen's framed um, using the rule of uh, thirds there, so his head is at intersect intersecting lines. Um, the only thing that's not great for me about this image is, um, in, in retrospect, uh, I wish that trunk wasn't over to the left. Um, that's not really within the rule of thirds. Um, the, that, that is the trunk on the far left. Um, if I had have taken a bit more time looking at this image um, and, and maybe trying to edit at, on the on location there, I would have probably moved my positioning, not necessarily where Cullen's at, but moved my positioning around so that tree didn't feature in it, um, or shot at a lower, lower angle so that the tree featured more in line with the um, rule of thirds so that it, the, the base of effectively was lower down in the image but that's just something to, to kind of look at and, and the type of things that you can kind of learn from critiquing your own images. Um, again you can um, export, we've already covered that, but one option that I haven't covered so far is the ability to save the enhancements that I've done. So if you find that the enhancements that you've made are the kind, type of things that you want to do continuously to, to an image, you can go into the My Looks and you can click the plus button and you can give your look a name. So I'm gonna say um, Outdoor Contrast. Outdoor Contrast. And save that look. One strange element of this feature is that once you have saved your look, it then applies the look to the image. So effectively doubles your enhancements. In order to change that, just within your options from my looks, click on normal, and that returns your enhancements to the way they were before. So now I have those custom enhancements. Next time I want to bring in an image that was shot outdoors and backlit, um, and I want to have similar settings applied. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful. If you have any questions or feedback, please use the comments below. You can follow this channel for future tutorials or you can follow my blog on my website thomasdavidcavanagh.com.